Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today I'm test riding this Kawasaki versus X300. That's right friends, I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. I'm here at Power Motorsports in Sublimity, Oregon. I'm actually just here so they can take a look at and fix the USB charger on my KLR, which they're doing for me right now. But since I had some time to kill, I asked and Matt was kind enough to let me take out this Versus X300 for a test ride and first impressions video. Was not planning on doing a test ride today, so this will be a true test ride and first impressions video. I haven't done any research on the X300 beyond the fact that I owned a Versus 650. That's my experience. But uh, the X300 is a bike I've wanted to ride for a long time. It's a bike that I get a lot of questions about from you guys in terms of a starter first dual sport slash adventure bike. I personally think this one's a little bit more of an adventure bike, a small adventure bike. But we're gonna take it out, we're gonna ride it on the highway, we're gonna hit some back roads, and we're gonna do some gravel on it and see how we feel about this 300 as an option for a first dual sport slash adventure bike, or even for some of you experienced riders, how you might feel about them. So let's give it a shot. Nice bike. Oh, it's mine. You guys riding my KLR. I don't know what he's doing with it. It's clean though. They washed it for me, so. That service, because I literally took it out and got it in the soggiest, soupiest crap I could find yesterday. And they're watching it. I feel bad, sorry guys. Okay, first impressions when you sit on the thing. Feels very small. It honestly feels cramped for me. And I'm not a tall person. I'm average height, I'm about 5'10", but I definitely, with my knees up here, it feels a little cramped as you sit on it. The seat height is low. I have the heels of both feet down. And again, I have a 30 inch inseam. So that's saying something. That means this thing has got a real manageable seat height. I'm saying all that not because it's a bad thing, but if you're a new rider looking for a first bike, that kind of stuff is very confidence inspiring. The fact that both my feet are down on the ground right now is very confidence inspiring, and that would make this a very comfortable bike for a new rider to really learn on. And these 300s, that's what they're great at. They're good enough to do all the stuff, like go out on the highway, and you know you can do kind of everything, but uh, they're not intimidating. They're not going to get away from you. And this one with the lower seat height is going to be, in terms of adventure bikes, one of the easiest entry-level adventure bikes out there. And people tend to get offended when I say entry-level. Entry-level doesn't mean that it's only good for beginners. Entry-level means that it's not too intimidating for a beginner or too much to handle for a beginner. And R1 is not entry-level, okay? But a bike like this is comfortable and easy for a new rider to get used to and learn on, but still fun for someone with more experience like me, who is solidly intermediate. I like the bar position. One thing I don't like is the two-tiered seat, so there's a, you know, the passenger is a little bit higher, just because it shoves you really far forward, and I find that kind of uncomfortable. That was one of my biggest complaints about my Versus that I had, but off for off-road riding, pushing you forward means that you've got more weight over the front tire, which is going to get you better traction and reduce the amount of washouts or front end slides you're going to get, so maybe it's not a bad thing for off-road riding, although if you're off-road, you should be standing up anyway. All right, let's start it up. So manual tack, I like that, with the digital display, fuel gauge, temperature. is a gear indicator, which I missed. This one's obviously got ABS because the light is on. Yeah, let's take it out and take it for a spin. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Oh, it revs high. That's four, I'm in fourth gear going 26. Interesting. So that's a close ratio transmission, I feel like. Holy crap, how am I in sixth gear at 38 miles an hour? This helmet setup, there's some wind noise, so... I'm gonna try to do okay and talk at highway speeds, but it may be that you get some footage with me talking over it from the end. All right, I'm gonna keep this brief because it is 40 degrees outside and I'm cold. That is 10 degrees above freezing, so like 10 Celsius, I assume, ish. I know it's not a direct conversion, but that's about how it works out. I'm gonna say something surprising. Are you ready? I like this better than the KTM 390 Adventure. Now, I am an avowed KTM skeptic, let's call it. You guys know that, you're just gonna say I'm biased, that's fine. And also that 390 that I test rode, I understand was rev limited because they have to unlock it after you break it in. So I didn't get to really feel the full potential of the bike. But even taking that in mind, I still feel a lot better about this Versus X300 for a person who wants to start riding motorcycles for the first time and wants something adventure-y. I would recommend this bike first choice. It gets my recommendation over the 390 Adventure because of obviously Kawasaki reliability, 
foot peg position is better and it comes with spoked wheels and it's just it's really easy to ride let's talk about what i just did so i took it out on the street on the highway funkiest thing is that it revs really high this thing red lines at 12 grand this is the engine out of the ninja 300 that's why it's designed like that so it's off-putting for someone like me that operates on dual sports that have a lot of low-end torque that don't rev that high but once you kind of get used to it and understand that you're going to be in fifth gear at 30 miles an hour, you kind of get it. And I kind of like it because it keeps the engine in that power band. So you've always got available power because it's just that's where the power is. But down low, when you're going slow or doing something on this gravel, this off road in a low traction situation, you are not going to accidentally spin that back tire. There's just not the power. I tried to do it over there a couple times, couldn't do it. It's very comfortable on the highway. It doesn't feel like a small bike in terms of getting blown around. The suspension seems good, it absorbs the bumps well, it deals with my weight. I couldn't get it to compress in any meaningful way standing up and jumping up and down on the pegs. That was surprising. This thing carves up corners like nobody's business. It was very comfortable in the corner. So if you're a person who wants to get started with motorcycling, you're looking for a first motorcycle and you don't know what kind of riding you want to do, you might want to carve up canyons, you might want to go on road trips, you might want to hit off-road gravel roads. This is a great bike because it'll carve up the twisties almost as well as a ninja would but you've got all this other capability this versatility <laughs> it's right there in the name to go off road and hit stuff like this um, which i wouldn't really want to do on a ninja with no suspension travel this is a fantastic all-around first bike i did not expect to like it at all i think you guys know that i wasn't super happy with my versus long term that i had my versus 650 and so i you know i expected this to be a smaller version of that and have some of the same issues and i'm not unimpressed I'm, i actually really like this bike so on the road, it'll do highway speeds. If you have a short commute, I was getting 60 miles to the gallon, going 60 miles an hour. Uh, great commuter, this thing, if you bought it, and just to save gas on your commute, you probably could pay for it in a year because they're not that expensive. Surprisingly capable on the highway, great for around town, light, easy to ride, easy to get your feet down, easy to flick around, easy to turn around. I turned around one lane back there, I turned around on this gravel road. All the things that new riders crave, this bike has. Very impressed with that. Very easy to ride and handle for a new rider. Off the pavement, and again, I don't really want to get into a semantical debate. This is my off-road test track. This is what I have. So off the pavement, also very impressive, which I was not expecting. This is really feels like a small adventure bike, like a bike that is actually a, a designed small adventure bike, not a street bike that they threw some stuff on. It's got spoked wheels. It's got a pretty decent suspension. The standing position is good. I like where the foot pegs are. I'd replace them. I don't like the rubber personally for off-road, but um, I like them. It's a kind of a fun little off-road bike. Great for learning on. I think you could build a ton of skills on this bike because it's easy to ride. And it, I was trying to spin the rear tire going around these corners and I couldn't do it in fourth gear. I couldn't break it loose even on these street tires. So one of my biggest fears as a new off-road rider, particularly on gravel, was leaning into a corner, giving it too much gas and having the rear end slide out and having a low, low side. Not a concern with this bike. I, don't, I couldn't do it on purpose. I'd probably have to put it in third gear to get the rear to spin. So that's a function of it revving so high. There's not a lot of low end tor torque. It's very forgiving down low. That doesn't then mean that you're set up for something hard. Like if you come around the corner and there's a hill climb, you're not gonna have the torque to get up it without a run. Um, or without downshifting like crazy, but it's not really for that. If you want to ride trails, get a dual sport. If you want to hit up some gravel roads and go moto camping and, and be comfortable enough on the road and have a great bike to dink around in town, I feel pretty good about this versus 300. I feel very comfortable recommending it to you. Great first bike all around. Hell yeah. It's a fantastic Swiss Army knife of a motorcycle. Uh, great first adventure bike. Definitely. I would definitely recommend it. Kawasaki reliable, not expensive, easy to ride. It's a great bike. So if you're taller than me, I'm 5'10", I don't know how comfortable you're going to be on it. Just because it's so low to the ground that these feet pegs are really close to your butt. These feet pegs? The foot pegs are really close to your butt. That's just geometry. And the seat is not comfortable. It's pretty hard. I don't love the seat for long, long trips. Those are the things I don't like about it. The display is good. It's got lots of functional things. The windscreen's not adjustable. It's got this platform. you got plenty of room here for luggage throw a freaking giant loop Tillamook on there or a Great Basin in a Tillamook, you'd have lots of room. Probably not bad for a pillion. I don't love the stock tires for off-road, but they're great for the street. Other than that revving weirdly high, I think this is a great bike. It's very comfortable and fun to ride. So that's my overall of the Versus 300. So if you have any questions about the Versus 300 that I can answer with my limited time on it, please feel free to leave them in the comments. But in terms of my test ride, my first impressions, that's how I feel about this bike. Uh, it's going to become my go-to, hey, I'm a new rider and I want to ride some adventure bike stuff, a little bit of light off-road, I will recommend this to people. If you want to ride lots of off-road and trails, I will recommend a dual sport still. But if you want to do it like a 33, 33, 33 mix of 
riding around town, riding on the highway, and doing some off-road like this gravel road stuff, exploring the forest. Great bike for that. Great Swiss Army Knife bike for someone that doesn't know what kind of riding they're gonna get into because it doesn't close any doors for you. It's good at everything, as far as I can tell from the 20 minutes I've been riding it. All right, well, I'm gonna hit this gravel road again because it's super fun and go back to the dealership. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I think. Excellent! Yay!